and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, drank, and married, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came, and destroyed them all. Behold the fig tree, and any other tree. When they shoot forth, ye see and know that summer is nigh at hand. So likewise thee, when ye see all these things come to pass, know that it is near, at the doorstep. In Revelations, is often quoted, and is most definitely reporting the occurrence of a pole shift, often in symbolic language. Hail of stones, earthquakes, exploding volcanoes, that darken the sky with ash, fire from the sky, waters turn bitter and red with the red dust, the heat of the long day, hot earth, frantic insects of the desert, and a red dragon in the sky. The appearances from the sky are described as creatures, such as a dragon, or lion, or scorpion. The Bible has a description of a scene by the primitive peoples, without scientific knowledge of today, impressed greatly by what they witnessed. Reading the words of Revelations, one can see those words that apply to cataclysms, without doubt. Around 1995, the earth changes, became more pronounced and noticeable, no longer just an issue for academic debate, but a very real and looming concern, directly affecting world populations, and suddenly having governments, calculating economic, material, and human losses. The rate of warming has been accelerating, and in the past 25 years, it achieved the rate previously predicted for the 21st century. record high global mean average temperatures, unprecedented since systematic instrumental temperature recording began in 19th century. Next was 1999, closely stepping on its heels. This was not simply an unusual event, but a threshold point, turning point, the start of a faster ongoing trend. Starting with 1998, each subsequent year, has beat the previous year, as the hottest on record in human memory, and this trend continued. Warming is not simply raising global air temperatures, it causes more air turbulence, more activity in the atmosphere, and thus, more erratic weather, worldwide. There is one extra planet in our solar system. It was known to ancient people by many different names. Sumerians called it Nibiru and Bible refers to it as Wormwood. It was known to create epic cataclysms on Earth each time it passed through our solar system, approximately every 3,600 years, on its long elliptical orbit extended out into open space. Every time it passes, it causes a pole shift, a crustal shift. Actually, Earth's magnetic core is pushed away violently, the crust separates and slides over the molten magma. Thus, each time polar ice caps form in new places, old ones melting and elevating sea levels, worldwide. Plate movements during these cataclysms result in great quakes and mountain building. Add to that, the extreme lashing by space debris and planet X, Nibiru tail, and petrochemicals forming an atmosphere, and falling like a wall of fire. Frozen mammoth carcasses indicate such changes, and also other evidence, collected by Emanuel Velikovsky. Charles Habgood and others, it is described in various folklore, legends about great upheavals of the past. Frozen mammoths show that they died suddenly, within hours, drowning, then freezing immediately, and covered with volcanic ashes from the volcanoes active at that times. Mammoths were inhabiting temperate climates, they were large herbivores, with plant life typical for temperate zone found in their stomachs in the solar system. It is inbound coming in from the direction of Orion, proving what the ancient legends have told, affecting the outer planets and roiling the Earth's core. At that point, 1983, this group's reaction turned primarily from discussions on whether it could be so, to be predominantly on what to do about it. The lockdown and cover-up of any discussion of Planet X ensued. The fraction inside the U.S. government that were warned of the approach were set about trying to protect themselves. Their first reaction was to save their own skins. The CIA was front and center in this regard, with the military close behind. Three alternatives were worked out and considered for the coming calamities. Alternative 1 implied establishing isolated underground complexes for the members of the elite. Alternative 2 intended sculpting and reducing the Earth's population to a select few. And alternative 3, purported riding out the cataclysms, on another planet, such as Moon or Mars. 
All three alternatives were implemented to a certain extent, and those in charge of these plans today are still hoping to succeed with them. Underground complexes, developed during the Cold War, 1950s and 60s, were deemed the best alternative at that time. United States government went underground, at Mount Weather and numerous other spots, as has been documented to the satisfaction of even the skeptical reader. This fact is not even being denied by the government anymore, but the talk of the end of the world has been around for centuries. For at least past 200 years, men have predicted that the end is to arrive at such or such a date. The announced dates have come and gone, with nothing happening. People are inured of such talk, and generally smile when they hear it. They are treated as cries of yet another alarmist. Would then anyone call Pope, John Paul II, a doomsday alarmist? The Vatican has purchased, with the funds of the faithful, a site in Arizona, and built an observatory on Mount Graham, in 1993, to watch the skies? It is in connection with the Arizona University, however, Vatican has the larger part of the control over this observatory, looking at deep space objects. Unusual optical design and novel mirror fabrication techniques allow its Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope VATT, to conduct observation in the optical and infrared, and unusually sharp focusing. Observations of unusual precision can be achieved there on a regular basis. Among the notable results from this telescope has been the discovery and classification of some 100 trans-Neptunian objects, most of them fainter than magnitude 21. Vatican is apparently very concerned about observing the deep space. According to a former Vatican employee, he discovered an encrypted file deep within the Vatican's computer center, a file titled Wormwood, along with signs of a direct link between the Hubble Space Telescope and the Pope. Word Wormwood means to make bitter or to curse, and is mentioned several times in the Bible. It refers to the coming of a judgment, bringing bitterness to the world, as well as the mark of the end days. In Revelations, Wormwood is the name given to a star that brings destruction upon the world. Magnetic push of planet X. Mars, Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto, and others share the fate of the Earth. Global warming on Mars is a well-known story. Between 1975 and 2000, Mars warmed up by 0.65 Celsius degrees, much faster than Earth. New findings from NASA's Mars Odyssey Orbiter, is giving indications of recent climate change on Mars. Dr. Jeffrey Plott, project scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Pasadena. Scientists who study Mars have concluded that the red planet has been actively changing recently. Big crevasses and cracks were noticed on sandy flanks three years after they were photographed in 2002. In 2005, data from NASA's Mars Global Surveyor and Odyssey missions revealed that the area of carbon dioxide ice caps, the glaciers that consist of frozen carbon dioxide gas, near Mars's South Pole, had been diminishing for three Martian summers in a row. Scientists suggest that such an intensive evaporation can be setting off stronger winds on the surface, which are changing Mars's relief. There is evidence of past pole shifts on Mars, found by scientists. The degree of the shift is lesser than the Earth experiences, because there is less fluidity in Mars's core, which has cooled and solidified. A new storm, and a new red spot on Jupiter, hints at climate change. Global temperature change of about 10 Kelvin degrees, destabilizes the atmosphere, and leads to the formation of new vortices. In 2005, Photographic evidence showed that Jupiter has developed a tilt to its axis. Europa, one of Jupiter moons, is noted to be heating up, too. And in May, 2008, Europa actually had a pole shift. Its axis of rotation, ice-laden poles, shifted almost 90 degrees, and changed their places with the equator. The previous axis is now located about 10 degrees from the present equator. Wandering poles left scars on Europa. Europa adjusted to particle flows, coming from the approaching planet X, as did other planets and moons in the solar system. Saturn itself, 
has a rather warm south pole, and the temperatures in that region suddenly jump by 3, 5 Kelvin degrees. In July, 2004, Cassini probe sent unexpected new data about Saturn. The rotational period appeared longer than that determined in 1981. As of today, rotation period of the planet is approximately 6 minutes longer than 30 years ago. Scientists are sure about the precision of their measures, old ones, as well as newer ones. What's more, Saturn appears to have its tilt affected in the same manner as Jupiter, leading its top. A moon of Saturn, Enceladus, was expected to be frozen and cold. Suddenly, Cassini has informed that Enceladus generates its own heat. Its high temperatures seem to be incompatible with calculations based on solar energy itself, according to existing models. And there is also evidence for polar wander on Enceladus. The climate of Neptune, more precisely its reflectivity, was recently changing, Lockwood and Hamill argue in Geophysical Research Letters, Volume 34, 2007. Global warming was detected on Triton, Neptune's largest moon. Between 1989 and 1998, the temperature jumped by 5% on the absolute Kelvin scale. The same relative increase would raise the Earth's temperature by 22 degrees Fahrenheit in nine years. Pluto is undergoing global warming, as evidenced by the threefold increase in the planet's atmospheric pressure in 14 years, and the associated increase of temperature is estimated to be around 3.5 Fahrenheit degrees. That's a 300% increase, which is the highest increase in any planet in the solar system, and it is increasing as Pluto orbits away from the Sun. The Earth is experiencing warming, too, although less dramatic than the previous examples. Venus, this planet doesn't belong to the list of planets where recent warming has been demonstrated and which are known to be currently warming. The same case is with Mercury. Simultaneous warming on Earth, Mars, and other planets of the solar system suggests an outside cause. Unknown external factor must be affecting all these simultaneously. But even more astonishing is the fact that outer planets are affected more. We have Pluto warming up to four times. Giant planets and their moons to a lesser degree. Mars ice caps shrinking and planets surface radically reshapen. With Earth warming only 0.6 degree. And Venus and Mercury, those planets closest to the Sun, barely affected at all. This proves that the cause of this is not the Sun, another favorite explanation.